Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It's fantastic to have you here. Today is day two of starting to work towards having a foundry here in the workshop. Yesterday, Joe and I worked on making some of the tooling down there. And while he finished up a pair of tongs, I made this little cylinder here that's gonna be the foundry body. I left off yesterday having used a plasma cutter for the first time, I believe, to cut these three holes. I learned that plasma cutting is very fun, and I also learned that I'm quite pleased that these are undersized because it means the first job of today is using a die grinder to open up these holes in order that those burner flares will fit in, can be welded, and then we can pull the refractory. So Joe is gonna die grind these holes open. Meanwhile, I'm gonna get that MIG welder up and running. I just gotta slap the uh, the gas tube into it and then uh, put a plug on it so that later on in the day Joe can then use the MIG welder when he makes up a small little uh, casting box kind of thing that you fill with sand just a small one for kind of jewelry size things and uh, and then hopefully we'll make a larger one too So I've got my fancy, uh, fancy MIG welder set up here. I just need to put some wire in the machine. Joe has done die grinding these holes. They're all looking good. That looks super neat. This is gonna be a great way for me to try out this uh, MIG welder for the first time. Are you, are you trying to hold off showing me the, uh, the last one, Joe? No, no, no. Is there no, something you don't want us to no, see? No, 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 I missed uh oh. One. Oh well, that's fine. You can blame it on my plasma cutting, but uh, we'll, some, we'll have to fill that gap. I think I'll be able to do that. So I need to throw some wire in here. I need to adjust all the dials so it works right, runs right. I can weld all those tubes in. Joe, do you want to start planning for the sandboxes? I will. Perfect. Wait, 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 wait. I actually have found something else that he needs to do. So that we can hold all the refractory in here without it falling down, we're going to take some bits of angle iron and we're going to weld the corners of them and that way we can hold the refractory in. So Joe, before we get to the sandboxes, I need some three millimeter long pieces of angle iron and I need 18 of them. They're going to go like this. Sound good? Sound good. Great. Okay, I like the sound of that. Oakley, dokley, rokley, pokley, tokley. So these now need to be welded in at the right angle, uh, which is difficult to tell, obviously, because this is around, as I explained in yesterday's episode. I have no idea how to find the correct angle, but I made myself up a little bit of cardboard that is gonna help me roughly find the correct angle, which is uh, about as good as we're gonna be able to do. So I'm gonna have to make sure that we're square this way and this way. I'm gonna start with one tack weld and uh, wish me luck. Ugly ugly. So I have these, uh, watch my what's it, these burner flares from my burners welded in, which is good. Interesting to see how welding those affects the roundness of this whole thing, which isn't particularly round from the flats here at the end. But I now have 18 of these little bits of angle iron, and I'm just gonna tack weld these in like a hexagon. Three, one, two, three. And what that's gonna do is that is going to hold the refractory in place, as I said. So with a little more MIG welding, we're gonna be ready to pour the refractory. And meanwhile, Joe is cutting up some box section so that he can make the first sandbox for smaller pieces, you know, jewelry size pieces. <laughs> So I've 
bit on the little angle iron pieces inside here, and I've also cut up some pieces of box section at a 20 degree angle so I can make myself little uh, tripod legs for the thing. So I'm gonna MIG weld these in place, and then it's gonna be off to the casting. <sighs> what a fun day. We got legs! I need to think about how it is that I am going to have the burner holes go all the way into the refractory, or how it is that I'm going to make holes in the refractory. These bits of steel fit inside the burner flares uh, pretty, pretty decently. However, as you can see, we've got a big old gap there, which is only going to end up getting filled with refractory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take three longer pieces of this steel. I'm going to cut it at an angle so that when it's all said and done and the bucket is in place and we start pouring, hopefully there's a little less refractory to have to chip away when we knock these out from the inside once the refractory is set. So Joey's making great progress on the small sandbox. My steel has arrived for the big sandbox. And here I am with my mask, because I'm about to make some refractory dust, which probably isn't particularly good for the, uh, for the old lungs. We've got 160 or 170 pounds worth in weight, 75 kilos of refractory cement. I've got far more water than it is that I'm going to need. We got a tub for mixing the concrete in the refractory cement. And over here is the bucket that we're going to use to make the chamber itself. It's potentially gonna make a little bit too large of a chamber. We'll see, hopefully it gets hot enough. If it doesn't get hot enough, then I'm gonna have to find a way to uh, bring down the chamber size, which is possible with the use of another refractory product. For now, we're we gonna try this. This is gonna make an enormous foundry, and I don't think I'll ever grow out of this, provided it'll get hot enough. Time to make some concrete. Oh yes, this is the right mix. So I once was on the phone with a guy. He said, you got your refractory right. When you make a ball of it and you put it in your hand and you shake it, it doesn't quite come apart, but it's a little malleable as you do that. So this is good, but I don't think it's enough refractory. So let's keep going. Okay, there's too much water in that mix. That's all right, because we got more concrete. Okie dokie. Now let's have a look. Got a lot of refractory mix up. I should note, just, you know, when I'm calling this concrete, it's not actually concrete. You can't use concrete for this. You've got to use a specific refractory product. Um, you know, if you were ever wanting to make a forge or a foundry, recommend you Google refractory supply, something like that. Then maybe add your location. I have to order the stuff in. It's, you know, it's a, it's rare that uh, you'll be close to a refractory supply. But what you're looking for is either an insulating castable or a hard castable, a dense castable. Here I'm using a dense castable since it's a little bit more durable, which means that hopefully it'll last a little longer. Now the dense castable doesn't quite have the same insulative properties, obviously, as the uh, insulating castable, which is often of a lower density, which of course helps it insulate better. So I've got bricks in the bottom there. That'll help take up a little space. I mean, we don't have to use so much castable. Those bricks are also extremely durable. So it's gonna create a nice solid kind of floor for all the mass of a crucible to rest on. Not that, you know, obviously it's massive mass that you can put in this thing. Okay. There we go. That looks like the bottom. So I'm gonna get a heavy coating of oil on all of the pieces that are going in here so that hopefully no sort of bond will occur. And we'll see if that works. If it doesn't, then it doesn't, and brute force will prevail, as brute force does tend to prevail when applied in appropriate quantities. Now, here is the bucket. And again, I'll do the same thing. Oh, 
I don't know if we're going to make it. I've had to go through my reserves of refractory. And sadly, the refractory that we put in here isn't just the dense castable that I've been using, but it's a mix of dense and medium density castable. Hopefully it'll work out well, but we're cutting it super duper fine. I was hoping I'd have enough spare to be able to cast a lid for this too, but I'm not gonna have any spare, so I'm gonna have to think about that lid. Maybe make it out of bricks bolted together. We're getting very close with our refractory though. We might run out before we hit the lid. The lip of the top. Oh boy. Oh boy. I don't like that. That's a little less than ideal. Now that's a lot less than ideal is what it is. I'm just making it worse to be honest. It's moved further over that way. The trouble is, is whatever I pull, I need to pull from the bottom too which I can't do, you know, because I pull from the top and what it's doing is it's going to tilt the bottom down. Shoot, shoot, shoot. That's not good. I am tempted by trying to pour it out and start again, but it's like 100 kilos of concrete that's starting to set. Okay, we got to pour it out and start again. It's gone below the level of that burner. <gasps> Damn it! Yeah, not a chance that was going to work. We've got to start again. All right, we've got to start again. It, uh, it wasn't working out. I don't know if I'm going to make it any better on this next one. All I know is we've got to start again. Oh boy, I don't like this. Ugly duggly righty ho. So on round two, I think this has gone a little bit better. Now it's still a little wetter than I'd like up here at the top, but thankfully the foundry now has a handy kettlebell uh, feature, which is good in case you ever need to get a workout in while you're casting. But everything's welded up. Joe obviously has done a fantastic job making up this. Now this is the little sandbox, and this is for small things. So this would be for doing kind of tiny, tiny jewelry projects um, uh, if and when those things come up. Obviously that slots in perfectly. Indexes really nicely. Joe's done a fantastic job. Make sure you check out his channel in the link below. On tomorrow's episode, we're going to be making another bigger sandbox with this. That's a piece of six inch by three millimeter flat stock. Ladies and gentlemen, when this is cured a little bit, I'm going to try and knock out those steel, uh, steel billets to knock out a hole and hopefully that'll be okay. I'm not going to let it cure all the way before I pull out all the stuff. Hopefully that's not a problem. We'll find out and you're going to find out in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe to keep up to date with this, uh, with this learning to cast. There goes my Lady X glove. On that note, have a great one.